Chris Lennon is chair of the BXF Working Group and Simti's Engineering Director. Chris, so briefly, what is BXF and what are its significant developments? So, in a nutshell, BXF is a set of schemas, XML schemas, uh, and documents, standards documents, uh, RPs, EGs, uh, that allow primarily traffic systems, automation systems, and digital asset management systems to communicate such things as broadcast schedules, both linear and nonlinear, as run logs, uh, content metadata, as well as instructions about moving content from point A to point B. So that's generally what BXF is. Great, so where is the work going next? So uh, BXF has, has gotten very active over the last year or so. We began work originally back in 2004 on BXF. Uh, we did our first publication of a BXF document in 2008. But in the last year or so, we've been focused uh, on an activity that we call BXF 2.0 which has been bringing BXF up to date on the current uh, requirements of our industry. As you can imagine, the changes in our industry from 2004 to now have been fairly significant. So we had to do some uh, fairly significant, significant updates to BXF to accommodate that. Now, currently, what we're working on is BXF 3.0, which is even the next evolution of that, looking at the future requirements uh, in our industry and what we'll need to have uh, in terms of BXF functionality going forward for the next few years. Great. So as a regular Synthi standards development participant, what improvements have you seen with the Synthi standards process? You know, over the 11 years or so that I've been involved with the Synthi standards process, I've seen uh, really primarily two significant improvements, I think. And the first has been the speed with which standards can be developed now. Uh, originally, uh, when I first got involved in this, it took a long time for standards to, to be developed. And it was, it was all for good reason. But you know the, the pace of change within our industry has accelerated to such a degree that the pace that, that we were able to develop standards at 10 years ago is just not acceptable anymore. So we have to be able to do that a lot quicker. And I think SIMPTI has adopted very well to that. Um, secondly, uh, the thing that I've really seen in the standards uh, process that's really improved is the accessibility of it uh, to people from outside of uh, kind of the, the club of standards. Uh, when I first got involved, it probably took me a year, year and a half to really get up to speed on what was going on in the standards community. And it took a lot of work, both coming to meetings and reading documents and that sort of thing. Now I think we've made it so much more accessible to people who are new to the process uh, or who maybe just have very focused interests in the SIMPTI uh, standards process that they can get engaged very quickly and get up to speed. Hans Hoffman, SIMPTI Standards VP, is focused on improving the standards process. How has the effort been going, and what results can you report? Well, the focus is really in increasing the efficiency on how we create and conduct our standards work. Um, this has multi dimensions, really multi dimensions. First of all, we operate according to an operational manual. This is our Bible, actually, according to we conduct the business. But it is important that people understand how to use this Bible efficiently so that we have a very fast track standard process. We cannot afford that the industry takes um, too long in order to get their standards through. And what we have done at this meeting here in ESPN is really to set up trainings, specifically to train our chairmen on how to apply our rules and processes. The feedback on these training sessions was imminent positive, and I'm confident that this helps us to streamline our processes. So what do you see as the main areas of focus that you would like to see simply address in the next coming 18 months? The headline for me is IT and media. It's really the convergence of those two technological areas. Uh, media is certainly defined by very traditional technologies in video, audio in the past. And IT is migrating into, into the domains of media. Now we have to find the ways and the standards needed that the requirements are actually fulfilled by IT products. Now we have a couple of interesting work items already on the table um, and we are looking forward to pursue them. I mean, one area is, for example, high availability of video over IP. Another area is that we have a new strategic thinking on metadata and we undergo some strategic exercises on how we can address the metadata issue for professional applications in the media industries. So at IBC in 2011, Simti, EBU and AMWA met to discuss who to work better together, providing an open dialogue for user input to be brought into the Simti standards workflow. So what progress has been made and do you expect this to become a regular event at IBC? Yes, it is. 
it is a regular event already because we plan our next get together with the EBU, the SMPT, the MWA, and perhaps another big organization on the 9th of September. So this is scheduled. And again, there will be senior figures from the different organizations reporting about the progress, what they do individually, and we identify common actions, what we can actually derive then out of these discussions. So this week, Simti concludes its second quarterly meeting of 2012, generously hosted by ESPN. What specific points of progress can you report? My first progress point is that we reached about 80 participants and this is extremely high for ESPN here. So I'm very pleased that we have a steady increase of participants in our engineering meetings. That's a very good progress too, I have to say. The other progress specifically in terms of standardization work is that we, in the middle of the week as we are now um, are on Wednesday, we have already five documents which are almost elevated to draft publication. Um, some of them come out of the IMF work, which is very important for us, certainly. Higher frame rate has delivered an intermediate report. The B-Chain Theatre Group has delivered a report for the Standards Committee to evaluate. Um, and so forth. We look into full range coding issues. So um, a number of areas where we made progress, a number of future new work items which have been proposed. I'm very pleased on the progress as we have it. Craig Kuttner is chair of Simpy's Captions Ad Hoc Group. Craig, earlier this year, the FCC declared the Simpy Time Tech standard a safe haven. What is the significance of that announcement? It really gives the, uh, the community that uses Simpty TT a, a, um, a, a good working base to work on the infrastructure needed to convert the captions from the existing library to the, the broadest base of, of users, the broadest base of devices, the broadest base of, of consumption devices, which is really what the standardization process is all about. It's about the popularity of a particular format being useful for the broadest base of devices across the broadest base of users. So what benefits does Simpty Time Text have for the hearing impaired community? So what are the challenges that this standard resolves? Well, one of the things that a standard resolves, especially the SMPTE TT format, was designed to repurpose the existing captions, is that the workflows required actually reduce the cost of processing captions and make more captions available. The more captions that are available benefit the hearing impaired community and others, such as uh, international languages and other other uh, global as a, global parts of SMPTE TT, which is is one of the things we also worked on. So, Craig, what's next for SMPTE Time Sex? Well, Simpty Time Text has a lot of things on our plate. One of the things that's really going to be beneficial more globally is the addition of international language support. Um, the Simpty TT format, which was originally conceived for the U.S. market, uh, again, the FCC Safe Harbor, um, there's a lot of things in, ahead of Simpty TT in terms of international support, um, support for uh, digital sub, the digital digital cinema subtitles and other things that would benefit uh, more content being available for the hearing impaired community. John Hurst is chair of Simpty's Digital Cinema Committee. So John, the committee's work has recently focused on higher frame rates for digital cinema. With the highly anticipated release of The Hobbit, directed by Peter Jackson later this year, it seems a standard for higher frame rate is quite timely. How is this work proceeding? It's going very well. Um, we started a study group uh, six months ago, and the group has been meeting uh, very actively and has produced an interim report that was delivered to the committee just recently. Uh, the report is divided into uh, short and long-term efforts that the group is engaged in in order to characterize existing systems and how we might get high frame rate out into theaters immediately, and also a longer range goal to discover what sorts of parameters might be useful in a high frame rate system in the future, notwithstanding the current limitations of hardware as it's currently delivered today. So where is the work going next? So having delivered now the uh, study group report that, that details the uh, capabilities of current uh, uh, hardware and also uh, provides a recommendation, a prototype recommendation for a digital cinema package for high frame rate capabilities, the group is working on producing test material that will be used to stress test uh, image compression algorithms to see how uh, those algorithms behave at high frame rates and to help us determine what bit rates will be necessary in order to project high frame rates in the future uh, at a reasonable level of detail. Merrill Weiss is chair of the Archive Exchange Format Working Group. Merrill, briefly, what is AXF and what are the significant developments? AXF is a method for storing together files in something called an archive object that allows the files to be treated as a single unit so that they can be 
treated together for, for long-term storage or during production, post-production processes. So it, it provides a method for allowing the, the use of archive systems in a way that's independent of what the media is that the content is stored upon and also that, that abstracts the, the stored object from the archive systems that created them. So that means that you can swap media, you can move media, re refresh media from one type to another over time for long-term preservation. You can move archive objects from one archive library to another. You can uh, use different archive systems to restore, from perhaps different manufacturers, to restore the archives um, without having to have the original to do it. So fundamentally, it gives you the ability to have the content stored in a way that's independent of what created it and what it's stored on forever. So where's the work going next? We're um, in the process right now of writing the, the first of the documents that are part of a suite that defines how archive objects are created, how the archive exchange format works. Uh, we will be f finishing up the work on that document in the next six months probably, and then it will go to ballot. Uh, after that, we'll, we'll move on to the next part of the uh, document suite. So as a regular SIMTI standards development participant, what improvements have you seen with the SIMTI standards process? Well, I've been at it for 35 years, and over that time, we've been working very hard to try and speed up the process. We're, we're working with much more complex documents now than we used to have. And despite that, we're getting the work done relatively quickly, which is, I think, a major improvement for SIMPTING.